Hi, welcome back to Digital Nomad World and the Weekly Talk. I am here in a very special on-location interview with Matthias Zeitler of Coworking Bonsko in Bonsko, Bulgaria. Matthias, it's such a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for coming on Thank to Digital Nomad. Thank you for Nomad having World. me, Becky. Thank you. And I'm really excited to talk about something that we're, you're going to have here next week, Bonsko Nomad Fest. But before we talk about the Bonsko Nomad Fest, Matthias, can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into the digital nomad life? Uh, sure. For many years, I had a, a job at a company. I uh, thought I have a super important career working for great customers. And then I decided I want to start my own company. So I think when you work long enough in a large corporate, you understand that freedom is pretty important. So I started my own startup. Somehow I discovered digital nomads when I started like a, a pop-up co-working event uh, in Tunisia and in Egypt and in Turkey for a few years. And people showed up that basically didn't have a home and just lived out of their suitcase. And very quickly, I realized I could be one of these people. So I decided to give up my permanent base, uh, travel more, and then um, found a place here in a rural Bulgarian mountain town called Bansko that really resonates with a lot of things I'm looking for. I didn't want to live in a big city anymore. I didn't want to be stuck in traffic jams. I just wanted to enjoy nature. And this is how it all started. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about Bonsko itself. If I'm coming to Bonsko as like a first time digital nomad, what does Bonsko offer? Um, I think a lot of people come to Bonsko because it's less busy, right? It's a small town. Uh, life here is slower than in a big city and you can really connect with yourself and you can connect with other people. And because it's a small town, it also allows us to create a really tight community. Uh, when you're in a big city like London or Berlin or Barcelona, for example, every single day something is going on. But it's hard to meet the same people again and again because uh, everyone in the cities also has their personal friends and they have a life going on. While if you come to a smaller place like Bansko, you will meet other people that are also looking for community and they, they're yearning for these connections and looking for new friends to do things with. And this is creating this community that we have here that's really difficult to create in a larger place. Okay, so what can I do for fun here in Bonsko? Like it's summer now and we're here. What What is something you can do besides the Bonsko Nomad Fest when you come to Bonsko in the summertime? Um, I think most people just want to enjoy their life, right? And this can mean different things for different people. Um, Bonsko is also a very touristic town because it's in a ski resort, meaning in the winter you can do all the ski activities. Uh, in the summer, there's hiking, there's mountain biking, there's lots of cultural activities, like, for example, the jazz festival that the municipality is organizing. Um, there's hot springs around. There's day trips. So in two and a half hours, you can be in Greece and Kevala. You can visit uh, smaller cities like Plovdiv, enjoy the amazing restaurants that they have there. Um, there's a wine region very close by. So there's many, many things that you can do here. But most important is you will find other people here to do things with. And I think this is what makes the place really special. It doesn't matter so much if you go now on the quad bike or horseback riding uh, or rafting. It's more like you want to spend people with uh, new friends. Yeah, I love all the things that you can do in Bonsko, like even golfing, fishing in the summer. Hiking is world class, in my opinion. Um, but I remember the first time that I did something here in Bonsko in 2018, I actually went with you and like 12 other people to North Macedonia and we went kayaking and that was an amazing time. So there's so much to do. But what we're going to do next week is Bonsko Nomad Fest. So can you tell us what is Bonsko Nomad Fest? So Bansko Nomad Fest was born with the idea that for a lot of people, it's difficult to commit coming to Bansko because they don't know where it is. It's a small town in Bulgaria. It's a little bit weird. Um, when we first started here, nobody knew it. Um, I still remember very vividly that when I first started talking about Bansko, people thought I'm a little bit crazy. Um, so the idea of Bansko Nomad Fest is to lure people here for one week for an event. Because when you go to an event, you know there's a start date, there's an end date, something is happening. So it's less scary. So it's our introduction for people to explore Bansko. And we will compress all the activities that we normally do over the course of the whole summer. We will compress them into one week. So we will have many amazing speakers uh, that will inspire us with their stories and their experiences. We will have unconference sessions where everyone can be on stage themselves to share their passions and their skills and knowledge. 
we have uh, many of these touristic activities that we talked about. We will have mountain biking, we will have rafting, we will have horseback riding, we will have paintball and airsoft, and we will go to the bear sanctuary and on the Alpine roller coaster and do the wine tasting and many, many things will happen. Uh, because one of my goals is also to optimize FOMO. So people should come <laughs> here and when they leave, they should have the feeling that they experienced only a fraction of what's possible, that they also want to come back. In the evenings, we will go to all the amazing restaurants around town. We have many night activities. We have a comedian on stage. We have live music. We will have a big bonfire. Uh, we will go to a pool party. We will go to the hot springs together in a pool that's definitely not suitable for 500 people. So it will be very, very cozy. We will all feel like little sardines um, making deep connections. We will also have uh, some partners here, like, for example, Nomad Soulmates that will help everyone to find a soulmate. Um, we have some people here that um, will bring their knowledge of the local region to the participants. We will have some uh, Bulgarian traditions. We will have Bulgarian dances. We will do some crafting together. We will have volleyball. We will have a big soccer tournament. So the whole week is really action packed. And um, the latest number is 550 people. So it's also really, really um, one of the biggest nomad events. And a lot of people, of course, will stay in Bansko, but many will also meet here and then travel together, explore the Balkans. So this is an opportunity to make new connections among the participants, but also make new connections with people. Wow. Yeah, it sounds like that. I mean, it almost sounds overwhelming for a whole week, but what you were saying about it being a small town, it's really because of the size of this town, I think it's a really unique chance to, like you said, make those connections that you might not if you're staying at a hotel and just going to a conference center and saying a few speeches, because this town really does become a nomad town during that week. So um, I would say that like also, well, first of all, I think we should back up a little bit. How do you get to Bonsko? Because you're like, it's this small town, but how do you get there? Um, so there's uh, two airports, uh, Sofia and Thessaloniki, uh, both are about like uh, two and a half hours away. Sofia is a little bit closer, Thessaloniki is a little bit further. Uh, most people fly into Sofia um, because it's easier to get from Sofia to Bansko than from Thessaloniki. Um, there's, uh, I don't know what the flight situation looks currently because um, of course there was a pandemic going on which uh, affected flights and cancellations and travel patterns in general. But normally we have Vis Air and Ryanair that fly into Sofia from about 30 different destinations. Uh, if you want to get to Asia, there's Oman Airways. Um, so it's um, a lot of good connections, a lot of cheap connections. So once you're in Europe, it's really easy to get to Sofia. And uh, also Bulgaria is not in the EU. Uh, it's in the EU, but it's not in Schengen, which means that um, some of our non-EU friends, uh, for example, Americans, Canadians, Australians, um, they can stay 90 days in a Schengen country like Spain or Portugal or Germany or the UK or wherever they want to stay. And then after that, they can come to Bulgaria, stay here another 90 days before they travel back into the Schengen zone. And um, I initially, when Uwe and I, when we came here to Bansko, we didn't realize this, but uh, I think this is one of the reasons why we have always a lot of Americans here because um, for them, we are the second best choice. So they want to be in a Schengen country and when they can't be there, they come to us. And of course, um, I like this. I have no problem being a second choice. I actually just had lunch today at a local restaurant here in Bonsko and the, the owner said, there's a lot more Americans this year, even more than Germans. And I'm like, really? So yes, I guess they are starting to take over. So also um, we should mention that the Bulgaria has the lev, not the euro, even though we are in the EU and it's tied like it's pegged two to one essentially, right? So, okay, if I got all these things this year that have opened up to me like sporting events, concerts, and now the Nomad Fest, why should I choose the Nomad Fest instead of all these different things I might be FOMOing into in this European summer? I don't know. I think you have to ask the people that registered and that are going to come to Bansko. Um, I don't try to hard sell people because I found that uh, if I try to convince people, it's always a disappointment. It's much better if people try to convince themselves as they talk with their friends what's happening. And it seems like a lot of nomads are going to come here. Um, and of course, I'm super happy that they are coming. And I think we will create a great experience for them. What do you think is one of the most unique events you're going to put on this year? I was here last year. For those who don't know, I did attend. And one thing I remember is we did a huge scavenger hunt last year and that we just ran around for about three hours in groups of like four to eight and we had to find different landmarks around Bonsko and that was one of the most fun things for me because we had to input everything into an app but do you have anything uh, that you would call unique for this year? 
So of course we are trying to um, put slightly different events on and use different activities, go to different venues. Uh, so even for the people that have been here last year, it won't be the same experience. Um, we go to different restaurants, we go to different pools. Um, I think what we are really focusing on this year is making connections. So of course, we always make connections, but this year it's really connections galore. So we will start the welcome drinks with a soulmates bingo, which connects people on a more social level. Then Monday evening is uh, business networking. We will have nomad soulmates here for romantic connections. And we have intros AI as a partner to stay in touch after Bansko Nomad Fest is over. So um, this year we are really making sure that when you come, you will leave with a hundred new friends. I love that. And last year you actually did a great job. You had an app that was just constantly being updated the whole week with all the activities. And like you mentioned, the unconference, that was people pitching their own ideas in the first afternoon. And then everything got added at different times during the week. Is that also going to be offered this year? Yeah, uh, this is part of the unconference. I think it's a very popular format because people enjoy listening to great speakers, but also people want to co-create the event. They want to bring their own passions into the program. And the unconference sessions allow us that everyone really can be on stage. And uh, it's more focused on like round tables and discussions. So it's not so much presentations to an audience, but really engaging with the other people around topics that you are interested in. Okay. Now you mentioned it's a small town and you said you have about 450 to 500 people coming. Are there still tickets available right now? Uh, so I think I said there's 550 people coming. 550. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, initially, uh, I wanted to limit the event at 500. Mm -hmm. um, then when we sold out the tickets, I realized I forgot a lot of important people uh, that okay. didn't register normal tickets, like, for example, some of our speakers, some of our sponsors, some of our partners. Um, so I forgot a few people. So the number is now 550. The tickets are really gone. We have, of course, some people that um, where their plans changed. So if you don't have a ticket yet, then check our Facebook groups and see if somebody is selling a ticket and we can do name change on tickets, but we don't sell any more tickets. Okay, I, if somebody decides to come into the town and like, for example, they go to, they wanna to go to the unconference, maybe they can't fit into the venue. Is that an option? No, it's not an option. So okay. it's a ticketed event. Um, also because of experience in the last year, this year we have like a bracelet for everyone. And I have the first bracelet so that I can actually enter the event. Um, if you don't have a bracelet, you cannot access any of our venues. Okay. And we also have an app to book all the activities and it's only for ticket holders that they can participate in the activities because they need to use the app. Um, this was also one of the learnings from last year where we couldn't really control access or didn't control access or also didn't expect it. Um, so if you don't have a ticket and if you're not in Bansko, um, don't come for Bansko Nomad Fest, come the week after to co-working Bansko, where we always welcome people, where we also do many events, but the Nomad Fest is really sold out. Okay, and if you have a ticket to the Bansko Nomad Fest, it's, let's just say you do have to work during that week for part of the day, let's say, which I know you don't recommend, but do does that include access to co-working Bonsco? Uh, so we have a special deal for people that need a workspace. Mm -hmm. um, they get 50% off during the Nomad Fest week if they want to use a co-working space. And also everyone who has a Bonsco Nomad Fest ticket and is registering for membership to stay after Bonsco Nomad Fest is getting the whole week of Bonsco Nomad Fest uh, for free. So it's added to their membership term, plus we give a 10% discount. On that note, can you explain a little bit about the co-working facilities you have in Bonsko? Um, yeah, I mean, we have uh, different areas. So we have grown over the last five and a half years into a quite of a sizable operation. So we average about 100 members uh, in the summer and in the winter, we're a little bit more. I think our winter peak was 140 this year. And our members are currently voting to figure out how much our summer peak will be, given that <laughs> also Bansko Nomad Fest is pretty big. Um, we have different areas based on different work patterns. So we have like a quiet space that's totally focused on productivity. We have a social space where you can talk with other people, but where still do people work a lot. We have a lounge that's more like a coffee shop where people go to hang out with others to chill out, uh, maybe to take calls. We have a, a larger workspace closer to the gondola part of town because also even though Bansko is very small, you can cross it in like 15 to 20 minutes walking. 
Um, we found out that in the winter, people like to stay closer to the ski area, while our main location is more in Old Town. Uh, we have a rooftop and a garden, so people can also work outside now in the summer where it's nice. Uh, last year, we added a location in the forest that we call the playground. It's meant for bonfires, for camping, for playing with chainsaws. Uh, we recently uh, dug a well, so we now have water at this location. And of course, the first thing that our members wanted when they discovered we have water was we uh, bought a jacuzzi. So we are currently putting a jacuzzi in the forest, which will probably have the most amazing views that you can imagine. Um, we are also building a small cabin on that location. It's actually a pretty big area. It's about 4,000 square meters um, or four hectares. It's um, a sizable location where we also have different areas. So we also put a cabin where people can stay overnight. We crowdfunded this last year with NFTs. Um, last year, crypto was re really cool. Um, this year, there's way less members that like to talk about crypto for whatever reason. <laughs> but luckily, we, we collected some crypto last year to build a cabin. Um, so there's always something going on. We are also uh, thinking about various expansion things. And um, I think our community is basically driving what facilities we offer. It is truly amazing the, the variety that you offer here in this small town of all these facilities for members. I have to ask because I love jacuzzis, jacuzzis. When is the jacuzzi scheduled to be finished? So I have to ask you, do you like warm water in the jacuzzi or is the cold water okay? Because there's also <laughs> many people here that uh, like Wim Hof. Uh, sometimes they go into the river and at the moment the jacuzzi temperature is the river temperature so it's uh, a little bit colder. I prefer warm water because yeah we have this glacial river this place to to go for Wim Hof but uh yeah so if it's warm water when is it going to be fully finished as a true jacuzzi Matthias? Uh, yeah so uh, what I learned being in Bulgaria I don't want to put any estimates on construction <laughs> but uh, for everyone who is staying here for the whole summer we will probably end up in the jacuzzi at some point. All right, amazing. And is the playground, because when I came last year to Bonsko Nomad Fest, the playground was a brand new thing. You did bring a group of people up, I think, just to have a bonfire and experience it. Uh, is it going to be a big part of the Nomad Fest this year? Uh, it's part of one evening. So we always try to schedule different things in parallel. So it's one of the evening activities. I think it will be pretty popular. Um, with maybe like 40 to 50% of everyone going up there. It's an off-road location. So we have two big um, military trucks to truck everyone up. That was my uh, next question. Are you still bringing people up in a military truck? Yes, I think it was. Uh, this is one of the things that we can only do in Bulgaria, right? So oh, the yeah. whole thing about liability and liability waivers and stuff is less developed here than in Western countries. And um, here we can just load people on the back of a truck. I think we had 50 people per truck load. Um, I'm originally from Germany. If we would drive uh, nomads around on a truck in Germany, it would probably be a problem, or we would be part of the Berlin Love Parade. <laughs> okay, I'm excited. I really want to go to the playground event. Um, and, and we need to make sure we sign up early, right? Because there are 550 people. So when you come to Bonsko Nomad Fest, it's really important you get into the app and you choose what you're going to do because things have a capacity limit. Yeah, so we have capacity limits for some events, uh, of course, for things that we can run multiple times. For example, we have a lot of people that are interested in horseback riding. Um, there's a limited amount of horses at the place where we do this. So we will schedule things that are very popular multiple times to make sure that a good amount of people can do what they want to do. Um, but of course, some of the activities might be overbooked and then you have to do something else. Luckily, it's not going to be a problem because there's many, many other things going on at all times. Let's talk about the food at the Nomad Fest for a little bit. So how is this going to work? Because I, I can imagine lunch with 550 people in this small town. How do people eat or what's the, are they mixing with different groups? Is it a, like a sign seating for different meals? So we have um, different partners around Bansko. It's full of restaurants. For lunch, we will order in so people can order from the app. We have four different restaurants that are going to deliver a meat option, a vegetarian option, a vegan option. So about like 15 different dishes to choose from every day. Um, and people get this delivered to our outdoor uh, venue to the park. For the evenings, we offer um, always like one big restaurant where we can bring a large group. And of course, we have recommendation for smaller places if people want to go somewhere else. One evening on Friday, we will organize community dinners. So there's like many nomad communities, like Citizen Circle, Wi-Fi Tribe, Dynamite Circle, Nomad Base, and so on. And on Friday evening, people from these communities that are here will go for dinner together, so it's smaller, more intimate groups that it can really reconnect with your other communities as well. 
one thing I do love about Bonsco, like you said, is there are a lot of restaurants. So if you do start to form a little tribe, you meet people, you can always have the option to go either during the Nomad Fest or after to any restaurant you want, because there's a lot of options. So yeah, I think that's going to be great. Also want to ask you about accommodation. Where do people, how do you fit all these people into this small town? Like, should I get an Airbnb? Should I look more at a hotel? Are they like ski hotels if it's a ski town? Okay, so I mean, also one of the learnings for Bansko Nomad Fest uh, for all participants is you need to decide early. So we had some recommendation for guest houses um, that were in the 150 to 200 euro range. Um, we also had a lot of apartment recommendations on bansko-nomad-apartments.com. Uh, at the moment, the guest houses and uh, apartments are all gone. So if you haven't decided early, at this point, you have to pick an Airbnb or go on booking.com. Uh, of course, there are still options in Bansko, but the better options, of course, are already sold out. Okay. And it is like, you, it's easy, from what I understand, to rent a car from Sofia Airport, maybe also Thessaloniki, um, because you could maybe stay in a town called Roslog, like a 10 minute, 15 minute drive away, if you really feel like you can't find anything. Would you recommend that if um, people get no, desperate? So, um, the one thing that happened, unfortunately, also because of the war in Ukraine, and because of like COVID is that uh, prices for rental cars have skyrocketed. So I remember oh. that it was really easy to get a rental car for about 200 euros a month. Uh, in the meantime, it's closer to like 250 per week. So rental car prices have gone up a lot. Um, also, I would not recommend to stay outside walking distance because obviously we will have parties and after parties, uh, people will drink alcohol. So you should try to stay as close as possible to the old town area of Banscombe. Uh, without driving. Okay. Now, if people decide to stay after the Nomad Fest into July, I know that Bonsco offers, they have a lot of festivals during the summer. What is happening in July and or August if they decide to stay that long? Um, of course, at Coworking Bonsco, there's always something going on. So we will have um, at least, my prediction is at least 150 members. Um, during July, and this means there's many people that want to do things. We do a lot of things in our community. Um, of course, we go hiking together. Uh, we do excursions. We play volleyball. We play spike ball. We play many board games. We have potluck barbecues. We go to the hot springs. Um, we go on the mountain bikes. So there's like many things that you can do in the community. Um, the town is organizing some festivals. Um, uh, first festival in July is like a traditional Bulgarian festival where people dress up in Bulgarian folklore uh, and we will have some Bulgarian music on a stage somewhere. And um, later we have the jazz festival, which is like a world famous event for Bansko, where for a whole week they bring jazz musicians from all over the world here. The nice thing about all these things that are happening in Bansko is it's normally free of charge. So of course there are some good seats for the jazz festival, for example, but there's also seating available that's free. Um, same for the folklore festival, there's going to be an opera festival, there's a film festival coming. So if you are into festivals, then this is a good place. Plus, of course, there's also other places in Bulgaria that have all kinds of festivals, like, for example, Meadows in the Mountain. Um, there's an art, a jazz art festival in Velingrad coming up. So um, I personally believe the summers are even more amazing than the winters, even though Bansko is often labeled as a ski destination. I agree with you. I've only been here in the summer. This is actually my fourth time to Bonsco and I always enjoy it. Like you said, there's so much to do. So I want to go a little bit further outside of the Nomad Fest now that we've covered it, but let me just see if there's any questions before we do. Okay, we do have a few questions from the audience. So let me ask you, Matthias, how large is the Nomad community in Bonsco and are there many locals or mostly travelers? So as I mentioned, so we average about 100 members um, in the summer and the winter, we are, we are closer to 150. There's also, of course, now, like first when I first came here, nobody thought uh, Nomad would ever come to Bansko. Um, there's or now also a few other Nomads, so there's uh, other co-working spaces that have opened because they thought this is a great business model. And I think apart from our community, there's probably 50 other Nomads in Bansko. There's of course expats. There's many people that come for biking, but uh, if you want to meet nomads, you have to come here. There's so many people, yeah. When you when you take it all into consideration with the expats, uh, are there and are there a lot of locals here that are part of that community? So we have a few Bulgarians that are members now. The people that live in Bansko, like the real locals, they are all working in tourism. 
and they have zero interest to engage with us because most of them have families. Mm -hmm. um, so they work in hotels or in other tourism related industries. Um, they're not designers or artists or software developers. So they're not typical nomad people. Um, and they live their life here in Bulgaria, but they have no need for co-working space and they don't need to know, meet any foreigners because they meet foreigners every day during the work. Yeah, and I should ask you too, like what is the level of English here in Bonsko for, with the locals? Is it easy to communicate with the local people when you're getting your services day by day or? Yeah, I mean, I'm here for um, five and a half years now. I don't speak any Bulgarian. I don't have any problems. You speak no Bulgarian, Matthias. Uh, unfortunately, I don't speak Bulgarian. Yeah, it is a Cyrillic script, so it's it takes some studying, but I have noticed that, yes, people speak English to me when I'm here, and it's fairly easy to get around and get things done. And I'm sure that there's an expat or another community member who's already been through something that you are trying to get done. So, yeah, okay, we have another question. Would you consider creating another Nomad Fest in some other location around the world? So for me... Um... My magic works in Bansko, right? So here we have um, started to build connections. We have started to build a community. We have uh, many people that we have good relationships with. And all this, of course, makes it easier to organize an event like this. So actually, one of the reasons why I started Bansko Nomad Fest is because there was another really cool event uh, that Estella Kuhn organized a few years ago called Freedom Fest. And she organized this in a, in a ski resort area um, in Spain, it was super cool, but there was no infrastructure there. And I think it was very, very difficult for her to organize something without infrastructure, like without having the local connections and knowing where to go and uh, bringing stuff like, for example, for Bansko Nomad Fest now, we bought a lot of equipment. We have uh, tents that we can set up. We have a music system. We have uh, wooden tables and benches and all kinds of stuff that's related to the event. And of course, now doing it the third time is much easier because we already have a lot of equipment and infrastructure. So for me, I think organizing uh, Nomad Fest in London, I mean, I, I could do it, but you would need to find someone who has enough money uh, to support this organization. Because for me, doing Bansko Nomad Fest is also something that we do with co-working Bansko, right? So it, it's also benefiting the co-working community. It brings people here. It's like great advertising. If I do this in London, the event would need to finance itself, which means there needs to be someone who is paying for it. And I see that there's many countries around the Balkans now, they talk about digital nomad visas and they get public funding to set up nomad events, but it's not the same thing. And they can't do the same thing because they don't have the community attached to the place. That's also bringing all the programming, like the speakers uh, are coming from our community. A lot of members are coming, they're bringing their friends. So if you do this at a random location, it's much more difficult. What I would consider though, and what I'm actively planning, is there's a really cool event in Austria called Ski Innovation. It's a startup event that they run in Innsbruck, which is a ski resort. And I think Bansko would also be a great event place to host like a ski, a Bansko ski festival for nomads or something. Of course, it's not so easy, so uh, it requires cooperation of, for example, the ski resort itself, like the operator of the ski resort. And so far, I couldn't make any inroads. Um, there might be another place in Bulgaria that could do it, but then again, um, it's a problem for me. I don't have infrastructure. I don't have connections. Though. So I think uh, my magic at the moment is mostly focused on Bansko. Okay. And in the summer, unless we can start getting the connections for the winter here. I mean, it, it could also be in the winter, but it's, it's more likely that we do it in a different season than, than we do it in a different location. Okay, cool. Well, let's see if we have any more questions. I had a question for you actually about co-living here in Bonsko. What is that? Is there a co-living option here or do you have any plans for the future? For so um, we are doing everything with our community. And one thing that came up a while ago is a lot of people in our community said, Matthias, it would be great if we had co-living Bonsko. So we explored a few different options. We found a building that is in the right stage, which means it's not fully completed yet. We can still influence it, but there's already like a concrete superstructure and there's some plans. So it's also not just on a green field. Um, I started to collect people that want to buy apartments in this building to then run it as a co-living space together. I think we have enough interest from the buyers. So we got like 26 apartments um, commitments for sale and we were about to go to the notary to start this project. 
And then unfortunately what happened is the construction company told us that they cannot agree on a fixed price because they can't calculate all the building materials while the war in the Ukraine is going on. This affects energy prices, this affects concrete, this affects iron. Uh, so all wood, all the materials that are required to complete the construction are very, very hard to calculate now. And of course, no construction company wants to take the risk to tell us a price now. And then over the next 12 months of construction time, find out that a lot of the prices are going up. And on the other side, also our buyers, they need to know a price if they buy an apartment. So it's not an option to say, let's buy an apartment, but I tell you in 12 months how much you have to pay me. So right. um, at the moment, the co-living project is a little bit on hold, but I think it's going to happen. It will be super amazing. So we have a lot of interest from our community. And for me, this is also a great way to get the community to own a part of the business together. And everyone understands, like, uh, if I own an apartment in a building where it's rented out to other nomads, it's can be a good investment, but it's also good for people to have a base. So it's like a combination of multiple things that are coming together that will create awesomeness. Do you still have that the access to that original building site that you wanted? It's just on hold, or do you think that the site I mean, of the co-living might It's change? It's on hold. Also, of course, I'm looking at other locations, mm -hmm. but the problem why it's on hold is not specific to us, but it's more specific generally to the fact that construction companies at the moment can't really predict what's going to happen. And this makes it also difficult for anyone else to do construction at the moment. Uh, Bansko is luckily full of like half completed buildings. I think the um, project that we found would work really nice. But I also have like two other locations that work, work equally nice if the owner finds a buyer before we can figure out how to get fixed prices for apartments. Wow. I'm so excited for this. Um, last question. I want to jump back to the Nomad Fest and end there. Can I volunteer to work at the Nomad Fest? Maybe let's say not this year, but if, if we're going to go into next year, if we're thinking for the future about coming, is it possible to volunteer? And what is the deal there? Do I get a free ticket or how long do you really require volunteers to be on site helping? Yes. So volunteers are a big part of the event. Um, on the one hand, they get a free ticket, but also a lot of people volunteer because they want to be involved more in the event itself. And of course, being as a volunteer, you look a little bit behind the scenes, you see a little bit more of it. Um, we generally offer always a free ticket and expect about 15 to 20 hours of help during the event. This could be, for example, content creation. We have people that take pictures. Uh, this could be helping speakers, setting up their slideshows. This could be being in a venue and helping with uh, printing of t-shirts, for example. Um, we have some people that organize volleyball tournaments or karaoke. Um, so this is very easy. And the way to become a volunteer is to sign up on the website early. Uh, we generally try to find a role for everyone. So even if you think maybe you're not the most amazingly skilled videographer, we will always try to find a role for you that fits. Um, I don't want to turn people away. So I think if somebody wants to be part of us, then we can help them to be part of it, then it should happen. Um, at the moment, of course, all the volunteer slots are gone. So it's too late now also because of preparation. Mm. But if you want to be a volunteer next year, just sign up on the website anytime mm. before March. Like, um, and we will definitely have a role for you. For some volunteers, we also provide accommodations. So we have some roles where people need to uh, have more time commitment. So then we also provide accommodation. And also for, for all the volunteers in leadership positions, uh, we also try to make other special deals to really reward people that help us to set up this amazing event. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing so much about Bonsco and the Bonsco Nomad Fest. I'm really excited to be back here again for my second Nomad Fest. And I wish you all the luck and success for this year. Okay. Thank you very much, Becky, for having me. Thank you. And guys, join us next Monday at 3 p.m. UK time, where I'm going to interview Cameron Starr and talk about his journeys in a tuk-tuk from India to Germany. You won't want to miss that either. Thank you.